Welcome to E. Patashala, UGC, Module 34, titled Foreign Policy of Japan. Objectives of this module is to introduce to you and explain thereby the key elements that Japanese foreign policy, how important they are and how complicated even they are in conducting relations with different regions and countries and international institutions. Also, this model explains to you how certain domestic and external factor compel Japan today even to revise and reinterpret its very content in approach to the basic conduct of its foreign relations. Background to this module will be very short, however, but covering the entire historical course that Japan passed through hitherto. East China Sea and Straits of Korea geographically separate Japan from continental Asia. The geographical isolation still matters in all policy calculations. During the Tokugawa era, that was actually from 1602 to 1852, Japan remained really isolated from rest of the world as a policy for over 250 years. As modernization progressed, Japan remained tied to the international community. However, up until the end of World War I, Britain had considerable military presence and economic interest in throughout East Asian region. Japan had defeated China in the year 1894 and 95 and Russia in the years 1904 and 5 respectively. Also that Britain maintained its territory and interests in Asia by forming an alliance with Japan in the year 1902. Till about 1936, Japan did not even consider Britain hypothetically an enemy and a threat therefore. Following Russian revolution in the year 1917, Japan rated Russia and US uh, respectively as potential possible threat in the years to come. Power vacuum created in East Asian region due to World War I and Great Depression reduced Western interest in East Asia that let Japan expand its interest in East Asian territory due to economic and market reasons. Pre-war Japan focused mainly on arms imports for its military purpose and expansion. Therefore, the military expenditure often was rated about 40% of its GDP. Since World War II, Japan's search for security has been depending only on U.S. nuclear deterrent. Its economic strength, however, and the security treaty and continued relationship with U.S. are two factors that count uh, Japan as one of the members of advanced West throughout the post-World War II period till now. War, defeat, surrender, and allied occupation allowed Japan to let series of political, economic, democratic reforms, Cold War tensions, and multipolar international security, though Japan's position and role appear ambiguous, still is searching a role. This is the picture with the defeat of Japan in World War II. Japanese emperor shed his divinity and made a public speech of surrender speech and it is recently converted into a CD forum released for the public about a month ago. And this is the picture where public listening through the uh, public radio announcement of Japanese emperor's war statement, war ending statement. Due to economic expansion, international expansion of Japanese corporate activities, and also alignment with uh, US for security purpose, Japan continued its search throughout international institutions to have a position, to have a say, and also to wield some influence. Victory over China, Russia, and exception of Korea, all these were seen by the West as proof that Japan had gained equal status with them in the early 20th century. Cooperation with the US occupation forces, democratization of Japan, demilitarization of Japan, adoption of Article 9 of the Constitution were motivated by the will to recover global trust and confidence in Japan. It was occupation reforms that were serious in terms of political, economic, educational, social, including religious, or let lease public activities, and thereby workholic, the so-called hard-working nature of the Japanese, were contributing almost to the productivity rise throughout immediate years of World War II. High growth actually referred to the decades from 1952 to 1972 
precisely two decades that caused lifting of Japan's international economic status. It became a trade uh, major country, virtually trading with every region. However, due to the consciousness, retaining quality and competitive pricing, the Japanese concentrated mostly in the immediate years after the high growth only on the United States because of affluent market and because of the large market, including that of Europe. Japanese search for rule, Japanese search for status, Japanese search for international rankings continued throughout World War II post period. Post high growth, that is since 1972, the oil crisis really hit the energy shortage world over. It was leading to two impact. One, high price, increased price and supply short. Twin effects of this impacted all the industrialized countries, both in the West and in the East, in particular here, reference to Japan. And also intensified environmental pollution and resource crisis, Japan diversified its strategies in foreign policy, used ODA, FDI, technology transfer as instrument of its diplomacy in conducting foreign relations to meet the national interest. ODA and FDI really need some explanation. ODA is Official Development Assistance. This is the economic aid that Japan provides to developing countries in order to upgrade their own performance and economic betterment. FDI refers to foreign direct investment, huge capital kitty that Japan even now possesses, goes to different countries for investment purpose. And technology transfer also was one of the key factors that played a great role in retaining Japanese economic ranking comparatively to the advanced economies, especially instrument of diplomacy that had become. Here, technology transfer, when we refer to, actually it refers to the old technology, pollution breeding technology, that is specially referenced to such industries as petrochemicals and also uh, paper and pulp, textiles, uh, similar ones. They were sent out as technology, better technology for absorption by rising Asian tigers then, particularly in reference to Singapore, Hong Kong, South Korea, and Taiwan. Currently, increased economic competition, regional security challenges are the concerns and resulted in political leadership focus on regaining economic strength, revival of domestic economy, regional security, reinterpretation of constitution, and military buildup. Together, this actually is lending Japanese image a decline world over. Current Japanese political leadership under Abe Shinzo, who is the Prime Minister, has really been not very successful in achieving a very good, reasonable, convincing diplomacy around East Asian region. As far as South Korea is concerned, there are problems of territory relating to Takashima Island, which the Koreans call Dokdo. At the same time, with northern uh, islands, there are also territorial issues with Russia and also with China. There's a great dispute for last uh, centuries, two centuries nearly, about uh, territory that's called Senkaku by the Japanese and uh, Daiwu by Chinese. However, around this security situation in East Asia getting complicated, Japanese have not been able to achieve any feat of success and forward march. And China appears to be increasingly active in its maritime activities in South China Sea as well as East China Sea. These things we really reach at a little stage, little later when we take up case by case regarding East Asian countries' disputes with current Japan. Japanese foreign relations constitute actually how Japan and Japanese missionaries overseas, especially Japanese embassies and consulate general in different regions, in different countries, perform actually towards implementation of Japanese foreign policy. Japanese foreign policy making at home is tied with Japanese style of decision making, which is different in case of Japanese international negotiation. This come to a test actually in dealing with specific countries of Japanese foreign relations. Foreign relations, Japan 
had to be very, very careful and has to treat it very delicately because Japanese have dealt only within themselves and between some of the East Asian countries historically. Japan never trusted because it is geographically cut off in Far East, which was referred to that region before World War II. However, for academic convenience, since World War II, Japan is called located in East Asia. East Asia has many countries. For example, Japan, China, Korea, North Korea, South Korea again, then Taiwan, then Inner Mongolia, and also Hong Kong. Given these seven constituents of East Asian countries, dealing with each country, how Japan has formulated policy, taking into consideration the local native specific issue will be very huge in order for convenience, especially for academic convenience, for students' convenience. We select a few countries from Europe, from, I mean, US included, from the West, and here, uh, East Asian countries, especially uh, China, Korea, some references to Russia, and also Southeast Asia, which is a chain of 10 small, well-integrated in economic sense, the region that has been the backyard and backbone of Japanese economic rise, support, and regional integration in the Asia-Pacific region. When World War II got over, Japan was defeated. It was immediately occupied by United States of America's leadership, which is called Allied occupation. This period ran from 1945 to 1952. In 1952, when U.S. was satisfied that Japan has been more than considerably democratized, considerably demilitarized, U.S. thought of granting freedom to Japan to manage its affairs by itself. And also, while signing a peace treaty, granting Japan freedom post-1952, actually, U.S. also compelled Japan to sign alongside another treaty, which is called Japan-U.S. Mutual Security Treaty that was signed in the year 1952. Very important, this U.S.-Japan alliances, security alliances, because entire Japanese uh, defense, which otherwise was called in the post-World War period extension of Japanese police department, and they had only been well trained in tackling domestic natural crisis and disasters like earthquake, flood, tsunami situations, etc. But here, now, Japanese have a uh, strong local force, domestic defense force, with three wings, air force and army and also naval force. These three are quite strong, capable of handling any untoward incident in and around Japan. But however, Japan cannot go to war. In Article 9 of Japanese Constitution that was uh, virtually drafted by U.S. In the, as a leader of Allied forces, it was uh, in force since 1952, sorry, 1947. That is what we call post-World War II Constitution or 1947 Constitution. Article 9 of this Constitution, Japan renounces war as an instrument of dealing foreign dispute or international dispute. In case Japan happens to be attacked or threatened by any other external country within region, without region, then it is U.S. under the scope of the treaty come to the rescue of Japanese and help Japanese save from foreign threat. This treaty has remained in force but Japanese in the last few years have been trying to obtain some scope for independent behavior and action within that treaty. Now, the present political leadership that is led by Shinzo Abe as Prime Minister has been trying to reinterpret that Article 9 of the Constitution, which actually is not necessary in the opinion of world leaders and 48% of the Japanese public also disapprove Abe's initiative to reinterpret the Article 9 of Japanese Constitution of 1947. However, it is also important that Abe is trying to obtain more security role for himself under the title collective self-defense, meaning in case either U.S. 
or any other friends or allies uh, of Japan in and around or threatened Japanese forces can go to rescue them, help them out. This the Japanese feel now peace constitution is undergoing a change, no need for Article 9 amendment. Article 9 is the crux of the entire new Japanese constitution of several articles. Now these two acts, that is reinterpretation of constitution and obtaining a security posture for regional guaranteeing peace and security is not necessary because US already underwrites Japanese security. However, the reason offered by Japanese or it is increasing maritime activities of China in southern China sea around and also in East China Sea where there are so many countries involved in disputes regarding even small islands where nobody lives. However, in South China Sea, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, even Brunei have their interests. Partly Islands is one spot in South China Sea where China has successfully so far built two airstrips that is to take off and land military aircraft now daring to build a third one. This has actually diluted the peace in South China Sea. East China Sea again has the same problem of Japanese and Chinese disputed territory that is Senkaku for which we come little later. And now economic dependence between uh, US and Japan in the post World War II period is another factor which has virtually lifted Japanese economic prospects. US under occupation reforms has since introduced many reforms, labor reforms, industrial policy reforms, economic and trade reforms, has agreed to buy most of the qualitative products produced by Japan and allow that entry into US market. US was already an affluent economy. Now Japanese have found an easy marketing scope opportunity for expansion in the US throughout post World War II period. However, in order to help Japan equally, US had fixed its currency ratio with Japanese currency from uh, 1952 till about 1980s early. That's called currency uh, arrangement between Japan and US, that is between dollar and yen, that is Japanese currency. Ratio was one dollar was equivalent to 360 yen. This has helped Japanese trade boost throughout World War II period. However, Japan was running huge trade surplus vis-a-vis -vis US and in order to reduce that, US had pressured Japan to take certain measures which Japan really did not succeed in taking such measures. Therefore, US freed the currency under Plaza Agreement that was an agreement signed in the New York Plaza Hotel. Since then, Japanese currency had been experiencing volatile situation in the international currency market, including Tokyo currency market. The economic dependence and interdependence between US and Japanese corporations between two nations have been of a prominent feature in improving the status and international ranking of Japan in terms of economic rise. This is just not uh, it, but there was a small uh, joke type those days before 1980s, including uh, years up to 1985, that if America catches coal, Japan uh, has to cough, vice versa. If US coughs, Japan will catch cold. This kind of a situation went on. However, trade negotiations between the two countries have been quite tough, it been very, very difficult. However, US had been resulting to diversify and pressure Japan to produce within US a lot of Japanese products, including parts of automobiles. Therefore, otherwise the threat from US was they will, they will implement Article 301 that is called Super Act. So with that, Japan was always threatened. Japanese have considered also with the experience of uh, oil crisis and many other countries in Asia, especially South Korea, China, also coming up as a competitor to Japanese in the international market. And given the international tension, otherwise for market share, 
simultaneously by competing powers virtually shrank Japan's presence world over. And Japan had really entering in the 1990s till today, continuing in recessionary phase. This impact on domestic economy, society, politics have been measured considerably. Other than United States, Europe is another continent where affluence has been witnessed for so many years and market there was quite an attraction to Japanese and that was achieved quite well. Japanese Middle East, it was especially after 1973, first oil crisis, then 1978, second oil crisis. Japanese needed to diversify their dependence on oil. Oil is one of the major constituency, constituents of energy that Japanese industry ever expanding required. And although they have diversified for domestic and production purposes onto nuclear energy, wind energy, solar power, but yet import of LNG constitutes nearly a large share of Japanese imports. Corporates and industries depend on imported oil. Now with often Middle Eastern region, which is major supplier of oil to world, uh, having entered into crisis phase very often through its own uh, measures, here Japanese have diversified their dependency from Middle East towards other region. Even within Middle East, Japanese have, Japanese companies have bought lot of stakes and they have expressed their interest to remain so, become a partner in production of oil. However, Central Asian countries are another one. Recently, Myanmar also is reported as having lot of oil and gas deposits. Even the disputed island Senkaku in and around is also said to be having uh, oil and gas uh, resources. Japanese are really looking at this. Even Indonesia is said to be. Vietnam is also said to be having a lot of oil resources. So Japanese are looking elsewhere from merely concentrating on Middle East for energy resources. So now, very recently, about three, four months ago, some of the two Japanese uh, reporters, journalists were uh, attacked by ISIS and that is international terrorism. Japanese have their own state policy to contain it. And since that event last three, four months ago, now Japanese policy towards Middle East is set to change is under deliberation. Liberalization of Chinese economic policy, opening of China market for investment, opening of also Chinese market for deploying foreign technology for production and then uh, virtually helping China as a production hub uh, for foreign competitive attractive companies have been making a news that has all contributed to China rise in economic sense. Chinese economic rise is also interpreted as China's peaceful rise. Virtually now any country, any self-respecting country to any country dependent or otherwise actually depends on China. Great deal. Chinese actually have been major trading partner with most of the countries in the world including no exception, whether US or Japan. Here Japan took advantage of liberalization of Chinese policies and sent most of their investment there and from there further sending, I mean exports. Now Japanese economy, which throughout post-World War II has been export-led success, has been export-dependent economy. And now China has virtually accommodated most of the FDIs, most of the uh, foreign companies have been located there. Now, China also has virtually witnessed economic affluence in the last 20, 25 years. Now, taking full advantage of that, Japanese economy really became quite too well interdependent on China right now. China is expressing its economic affluence, its own economic power regionally for a long time. Now, internationally for some time. Now, given this Chinese economic rise in East Asia in the global level. Now, they are also entering into some of the military misadventures, if we can call it. So, they are intruding into uh, international water uh, borders. They are crossing over, fishing or whatever purpose. So, Japanese are keeping an alert. US is also 
to some extent keeping an eye on Chinese movement in South China Sea and East China Sea. Now US had decided just a year to ago to have a new policy called PIVOT according to which 60 percent of the US forces here in after will be deployed in the Asia Pacific. This has given virtually a uh, undeclared war kind of a situation in the Asia Pacific. Japanese being a ally of the United States now is provoked by US in order to counter the Chinese expansionary activities in East China Sea and South China Sea. Therefore, Japanese claim there is imminent need to enhance their defense budget and uh, introduce a series of security measures which are under consideration of Japanese parliament. Japanese parliament's lower house, house of representative, which is one of the most powerful, have already passed this. However, pending uh, passing by the upper house, that is uh, house of counselors, uh, is being uh, debated currently, uh, maybe in a week's time or so from now, Japanese upper house is set to pass this also, which will virtually shift focus of Japan into uh, larger security uh, situation to navigate a newer challenge in the Asia Pacific region. This is the concern of Japanese public also. Nearly 48 percent of the public in many public opinion surveys conducted by Japanese media have expressed their opposition. Opposition parties are also protesting. Virtually in last few months in Japan, every Friday evening, tens and thousands of public are gathering, civil society members also gathering and in order to express their protest against Japanese government passing the security bill. However, pres uh, present Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is also a nationalist. He wants to achieve unfinished agenda of his grandfather who was Prime Minister in the earlier days of post-war era. However, now Japanese moves in security area in the name of defending their territories in and around uh, sea and land is a matter of great concern to other members, especially of those whom Japan had overrun during before World War II period. This is a slide showing the picture of Kakuye Tanaka and Shaven Lai of China uh, in the uh, in 1970s early uh, when Japan, China bilateral relations were normalized. These two leaders had actually uh, concluded almost in case there is no oil or gas resource found in and around Senkaku Islands, Japan is not going to make a big issue. Neither China is going to make a big issues. However, this situation has uh, overgrown in the last uh, three years, particularly since April 2012. That was when actually Japanese government nationalized uh, Senkaku Islands. In response to that, the Chinese government has reacted by expanding their uh, forces into East China Sea. This is the picture of uh, East China Sea, which actually uh, also shows Senkaku Island in the center of the map, which is dotted circle, Senkaku Islands. Nobody lives in the island. It is a small uh, rife of about five to eight islands. Japanese private party owned it, a family by name Kurihara from Saitama prefecture owned it and uh, they bought it quite long ago and Tokyo Metropolitan Governor Mr. Shintaro Ishihara in 2011 and 12 planned to develop that island as resorts and make some profit out of it for his government. However, he raised public fund. He wanted to buy it up from the private company and that did not happen before which the clues were known to Japanese national government under the then Prime Minister Noda, Japanese government nationalized Senkaku Islands. That enraged China. And therefore, in the last uh, two, three years, we have been witnessing some skirmish between China and there. 
and uh, this is a situation worth watching which has actually damaged japanese economic uh, uh, prospects chinese economic prospects however in the last uh, few months maybe a month or so chinese uh, uh, devaluation of currency has let loose and also stock exchange uh, virtually sliding has created an impact and a sense world over there is also a possibility that many european powers and us and japan would withdraw their investment from there where to go after that is a question it is southeast asian countries which actually open up more opportunities which is in economic sense a very well integrated market this is a slide cartoon published in japan times published from tokyo just indicating china the dragon grabbing senkaku islands now another important uh, country and peninsula in east asia is koreas korean peninsula it has been divided into north and south korea since the war there between 50 and 52 1950 and 52 japan south korea have different approaches to historical issues example territory itself for example a more important issue territory since have been already referred to takashima island which is a dispute between both uh, japan and china uh, sorry japan and korea now comfort to men is another historical uh, issues that has been dragging on and uh, not resolved japan north korea is also a part of very very important two countries in uh, northeast asia and north korea's nuclear threat and abduction of japanese fishermen and ordinary public uh, also have been figuring as an obstacle for uh, improving of relations however japan is a party uh, in the six party talks to resolve uh, issues relating to north korea which has not been really progressing then japan southeast asia this is a very very important uh, region to be studied actually in the post world war 2 period especially after 1973 oil crisis japan chose this region also to be included in the creation of successful asian production alliance system and most of the southeast asian nations member those days beginning only five then added by uh, brunei as a sixth member then covering vietnam cambodia laos and myanmar now that makes full house of southeast asian nations in the asean and as an integrated market of 600 million population nearly this region has better economic integration purpose of asean is to collectively develop asean region and not necessarily focus on any political or security agenda market attraction investment destination these are the two factors which are driving japanese attention to southeast asian region for quite some time and japan's interest now extends to security matter because cooperation vietnam in view of chinese increased maritime activities in south china sea can be seen in the last uh, few days particularly and japanese government only last week has announced a provision for uh, supporting vietnam in terms of upgradation of their maritime surveillance with a donation of dollar 385 million Japan Russia relations constitute another very major Japanese foreign policy attention uh, since World War 2 2 there has been quite a dispute between uh, the two four important islands which Russia also claims Japan also claim together Japanese call that northern territories only four major islands Etorofu Kunashiri Habomai and Shiketan these are the four uh, islands which are under dispute Yatorofu was visited by the deputy uh, Russian prime minister very recently and this has entered the Japanese foreign policy uh, foreign ministry in particular issue of northern territory seem to be having no uh, resolution mechanism in the immediate future uh, Japan India relations in bilateral terms have been expanding 
strengthening in the last few years, especially from the beginning of this century when Japan and India signed global partnership agreement. And this uh, relationship India between India and Japan has been developed, had been lectured, had been provided in text forum already in UGC module number 35 relating to Japan's history and society. Bilateral relations are now expanding. India earlier was only a resource provider to economic partnership. Now focus on security matter and cooperation at global level in tackling challenges. Japan became member of United Nations since the year 1956. Uh, however, Japanese status in the records of United Nations still remains as a enemy nation. However, this can be deleted if uh, there are more reforms introduced in United Nations in the coming years. Japanese record of voting performance in United Nations resolutions so far has been in perfect line with the United States recommendations and United States recommendation of and United States voting of resolutions. Japan and US more or less have been voting on similar patterns. Also, Japan has been a non-permanent member of United Nations Security Council. It wishes to become a permanent member in the UNSC only when, Jap uh, only when United Nations Security Council expands. Reforms relating to this are necessary. Very recently, India has succeeded in letting UN reforms to happen at least to come up for debate in the next year's agenda. And this is a major pit of success by India. But however, Japan had been campaigning uh, amongst the members of United Nations to support its candidature in becoming a permanent member. Japan has been contributing to UN budget regularly, annually, without a fail hitherto. It has virtually been contributing up to 18 to 19 percent of annual budget of UN. However, there is a fear and there is a possibility that from next fiscal year onwards, that is 2016 and 17, this contribution might decline almost to 10 percent. Now we observe what had been the content of this module hitherto and try to summarize. Japan's foreign policy is undergoing changes from time to time depending on the global tensions, events and changing regional security situations. Japan foreign policy has a strong economic content even now of late focusing on security matters. In Asian region, security situation in East and South China Sea, growth prospects in Southeast Asia and emerging economies, North Korean nuclear posture determine Japan's foreign economic, foreign diplomatic policies. This is a diagram displaying Japanese growth rate decline in the years to come say up to 2050s. This is a diagram displaying how bad the public debt situation in Japan is. Japanese government had always been borrowing by issuing Japan government bonds which is called JGBs whenever it needed more public fund to invest and meet national expenditure. However, it is not going to be a crisis like in many other economies because nearly 94 percent of this public debt is held by the Japanese public, Japanese bank, Japanese financial institution and only 6 percent or so are held by foreign companies and countries. At the final step, one major question remains. Can Japan be a solution to Asian and global problems? Answer can be clear no because Japan is a part of the problem and as such cannot be a solution and therefore Japan also must face risks and find collective solution as the way out. Domestic economic revival remains top priority. Economic focus in foreign policy continues with the use of ODA, FDI, technology transfer as instruments of Japanese diplomacy. The historic shift Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is trying to achieve by focusing on security matters and expanding Japan's security and defense posture around East Asia and South China Sea region is going to be a focus of next few years both bothering Japanese foreign ministry and the related uh, foreign ministries 
in countries concerned. Having introduced a uh, unilateral reinterpretation of post-war constitution that allows Japan to assume a collective sense defense role in the region is going to be another concern. However, despite protests by opposition parties and the public, this is certainly leading to risks at home and in the East Asian region in the years to come. Japan need to focus on it better if they withdraw from expanded role in security matters. This is a slide displaying pictures of public protest only in the last few weeks, every Friday and nowadays almost every day. Maybe by next week, Upper House also will accept and pass these security bills in series. However, the committee of the Upper House has just today cleared these bills. This is good news for Abe, but however bad news for Japan as such. Another slide also showing uh, public protest. Thank you.